In all means po, are you in favor of the Cordilleran autonomy? I have always been an advocate. I do not claim to be number one advocate of Cordilleran and autonomy. And why is that? Yes, because to me, this is the best way that we can improve the situation of the Cordilleras. The future of our region, future of our children and our children's children. That's why. I had been so involved in crafting the bill for the autonomy of the Cordilleras. Because again, while I say I'm in favor of autonomy, the most important point is the provisions of the bill. If you will note, Republic Act 6766, the first autonomy law that had been passed was not ratified by the people of the Cordillera. There are certain provisions there which are problematic. That's why the, oppos the oppositors against autonomy can easily uh, come out with untrue stories of saying, all right, you vote for autonomy. Where do you get the income to pay the teachers, the police, and everything? You have to impose taxes to your chickens, to your pigs, to your carabao, to generate income to pay them. That's not true. We address all of those. You know, if only we have the time, I can more or less substantially memorize. I do not know the recent bill that we, they had filed, but I think it's substantially the same with it has only 18 to 19 articles. I can go article by article oh. <laughs> if you want to. That will show to you that it will be an improvement of our present situation. If those will be followed, I came out with the basic uh, five principles that must be or elements that must be complied to achieve autonomy which will ensure an improvement of our present situation. This is number one, have our legal identity. That will devolve to us powers right now being exercised by the national government to manage our own natural resources, our own affairs in the region, preserving our cult culture and tradition, worth preserving, protecting our ancestral land, and increasing the share that we get from the national government. That's number one. Number two, even if we will become autonomous, there will be no diminution of our existing benefits that right now mm -hmm. we are getting. Existing powers and benefits that right now we are exercising. Example, internal revenue allotment, which simply says that even if we will become autonomous, we'll continue to receive that. And over and above the internal revenue allotment, there will be shared income of the national government from the collections of the different agencies like the NPI, land transportation, yeah, which is under our proposal, 80% of those collected in our region should remain to the region. Only 20% will be given to the national government. Right now, 100% is going to the national government. We have to somewhat amend the corporation code in order that we correct the injustice that long time we have been suffering. Benguet as an example. Benguet was the host of the biggest copper and gold mining industry entire the Far East. Huh? Oh. But what is Benguet? It's not the first class province. Because they get the gold and minerals of Benguet, they, they do not pay taxes in Benguet. They pay it in their central offices in Makati. Makati yes. mm -hmm. So persons, juridical or natural, doing business in the region shall pay their taxes for the income they realize in the operation of their business here in the region to likewise benefit the sources of their income. Third, we do not abolish the regional line agencies, but they will be devolved to the, substantially devolved to the autonomous government. The, we do not remove their budgets. You know what? Big help. 2017, when I was the regional chairman of the Regional Development Council, you know how much the budget of the line agencies in our region, despite the fact that it's the lowest among all the region's budget in the country, but it's uh, 
more or less, you know, it's 29 billion to be spent wow. only in car. So even if we will not, even if we will become autonomous, that should not stop. We maintain the regional line agencies. They have their own budget aside from the budget of the autonomous region. No, of course, dismissal of employees except for just cause and after due process. That's the number three. Number four, to ask the national government to give us the subsidy. Justification. If you study the reason why placed in Section 15, Article 10 of the 1987 Constitution, the provision that gives us to become autonomous in status, it is because principally of our culture and tradition and the national government admits that the development of the Cordilleras and Muslim Mindanao had been neglected for a long period of time. On that basis, we ask the national government to get the region subsidy, which under our proposal, 10 billion per year for the first five years, and then 5 billion per year for the next five years, or in short, in 10 years, 75 billion pesos that be utilized for the infrastructure and economic development of the region. Kung hindi natin kukurapin yan, malas lang kung hindi mag improve ng ating region. Over and above that, we place a provision of how the 10 billion will be distributed. 20% will go to the autonomous government. 6% will be a reserve. What is this reserve fund for? So that when some of our provincial municipality capitals will become cities, we have source of funding to give it to them. And then 23% uh, of the remaining 74% uh, will be divided equally by the highly urbanized city in the six provinces, Hatin Kapatid, in short divided by seven. The 2% will go to the component city of Tabo, right? Yes. And then 35% uh, of the 74% will be divided equally by the municipalities in entire region. Uh, and the remaining 40%, completely 100%, will be divided equally by all the barangays in entire the region. So as I said, huwag natin lulukuhin yan. Walang uh, dahilan kung hindi tayo mag-i-improve. And then, the last principle is to ensure the financial uh, sustainability and capability of the region in an autonomous status.